This simulation represents a traffic stream by means of a map of trajectories in the time-space plane. The simulation also enhances some of the main features of the vehicular traffic phenomenon, namely the transition between different traffic states, for example between free-flowing and congested regimes, and the propagation of queues. Consider a free-flowing traffic stream traveling on a single lane arterial and approaching a traffic signal. Traffic evolution is given by the vehicle's trajectories. In this time-space diagram, you can observe vehicles' trajectories over a complete signal cycle. Recall that the slope of each trajectory at a given instant is the vehicle's instantaneous speed. Note how vehicles stop when the signal turns red. This is an horizontal trajectory, and the queue of stopped vehicles is formed. Trajectory's representation in the time-space plane is a comprehensive illustration of the traffic evolution and can be thought of being equivalent to a video recording of the episode. In order to play the video stored in a trajectory's diagram, it is simply needed to sequentially reproduce vehicle's position at consecutive instants of time. The simulation shows the vehicle's positions at a given instant, a vertical line in the time-space diagram, and lets the time evolve. At the left side of the screen, you can see the video of a complete signal cycle. Now, the signal turns red and the vehicles start braking until a full stop. The queue starts and keeps growing against traffic direction during the rate phase of the signal. The signal turns green and the front vehicles in the queue start accelerating. The queue starts dissolving from its downstream end and against traffic direction. Now all the queue has been cleared. Because all the queue clears before the signal turns red again, the signal is said to be undersaturated. Let's observe another cycle. Now we are going to focus on the creation and clearance of the queue. The vehicle's deceleration area in time space is now highlighted in red. This corresponds to regions where trajectories exhibit a negative curvature. This region implies the transition between a free-flowing and to a congested traffic state. Physically, this is seen as the back of the queue. Also, the vehicle's acceleration area in time-space is highlighted in green. This corresponds to regions where vehicle's trajectories exhibit a positive curvature. This region implies the recuperation of a free-flowing traffic state. Physically, this is seen as the head of the queue. As you have seen, the back and the head of the queue, meaning the traffic state transitions, evolve with time. The evolution of these transitions is represented by the trajectories of the red and green strips in the time-space diagram. These are not the trajectories of any particular vehicle, but the trajectories of information waves which tell drivers to adapt to a new traffic state. These are called traffic shock waves. Now we are going to focus on the trajectories of the shock waves. If two colliding traffic states do not change, the transition between them needs to evolve at a constant speed. This is a linear shock wave trajectory. You can see that both the Q creating shock wave in red and the Q dissolving shock wave in green can be roughly represented by linear trajectories. These shock wave trajectories exhibit negative slope. This means that their speed is negative and that they evolve against traffic direction. 
you can see that the Q-dissolving shock wave is faster than the creating one, in absolute terms. This means that, eventually, both shock waves are going to collide, and the congested traffic state will vanish. In conclusion, the shockwave analysis is a powerful tool to predict the extent and duration of queues, like many other aspects of traffic evolution. This is why macroscopic traffic flow theory mainly deals with the modeling of shockwaves.